Okay, hello everyone. So what I'm going to do in this lecture, I'm gonna show you how to store information locally and on your device. There are three ways to store information uh, on your device. One way is to use small amount of data using user defaults. Another way that you can use, you can use text field or text files. The other one that you can use, it is you can use a database. So for the, for this example, we're going to use the user default to store a small amount of information on your device. So if I go back to the, if this is an application, so you could do that already. I already designed the application. So I have, I have a small app that has a text field. This field has called, an, it has a, a link. It has already a, an ID outlet called name. This button has an action and this button has an action. So if we look at the view controller, the text field outlet is called TXT name and the two actions is called uh, save name and the other one is called read name. So let's get started with the save name. So what we're going to do whenever you enter anything in the text field and you wanna store it locally, so you click on save, it will take the value here and store it to the, uh, in the user default. So if we go to the view controller and let's start adding, talking about the user default. User defaults are used to store key, uh, key value pairs. For example, you can say name <coughs> is the key and the value for name, for example, it would be my name, Ali. So when you store it locally, you will use the key and then you will use to get, you'll use the key to store it and this would be your value. And to read it back, you will use the key to get back the value that you stored locally, all right? So that's what we're going to do. So how do we get access to the user default? So if I'm gonna say let default equal user default, all right? And then get a current copy of the standard user default within your application access to your sand, the sandbox within the application. Now, if I wanna store a value, for example, if I say let name equal txt name dot text, and that will give me the value that I stored. Obviously, if you wanna do any validation, all of that, you can do that before you do this step. Now, the next thing that I need to do is that because it is a key value pair, I need to give it a key. So in order to save it, I use that key, and in order to read it back, I read that key. So what I say, I use that key. So if I say let key equal username, so that's the key that I will use to read the value back. So if I say let, now to store it, all I have to do is that you say default dot, <coughs> um, default dot set, and then we're gonna set the, uh, the, the, uh, the name, and then we need to give it the key value, which is what? The key value is going to be uh, uh, the key, all right? So that's how easy it is to save something to the user default. Now, if you wanna get validation, you need to validate. You can do validations before that. You can do, uh, before you actually set, set it, set the, uh, write it to the default, and then you wanna give confirmation, you can put an alert like we've done before. You put an alert saying that your user default got saved, all right? So, but to test it, it's simply all you do is that you just select the, uh, the device and then you simply run it. You're not going to see anything. The only thing that you're going to see when we write the code for reading the data. So if we get, here's my application. So if I type in here, for example, Ali, and then I click on save, here's where you can do validation and you can do give a user notification, uh, like uh, feedback about the information that's saved. 
So what happens now? If I click on save, that information is saved. Even though your application is not running, that's different than memory. When you stop your application and then you try to read back the data, you should be able to read that data without having to do what? Without having to uh, enter that data again and again, all right? So if I close this and then go back to the next section, next topic, which is how we get the data back, all right? How do we read the data back? To read the data back, you need, again, you need to get a reference to the user default. So I get the reference to the user default. Then I need to use the same key that I used before in order to read the data. So the same key that I use to write the data to the user default, I use the same key to read the data. Now to read the data from the user default, we don't know what type of objects to store. So this could be a user, could be a string, could be an integer, could be a structure, could be binary code, whatever it is. So what you need to do is that you need to get the object that is stored using that key. So how do I do that? You say if um, um, you default dot object, all right? So when you say dot object for what? For a key, what key? The key that you use here, which is called key. If it is, if default dot object for key is equal to null, what does it mean? That means I could not find that object. If it is equal to null, we didn't find it. So you can say uh, print could not, user cannot be found, user is not saved. All right? Else you actually found it. So if you found it, what do you do? If I type in else properly, <laughs> what do you do? You take the value that you found, and you, you take the object that you found, and what we say, we convert it to the type that you want. And if it is correct, then you can actually print it, uh, put it in the, uh, in the text field that we already have. So here we can say, let username is a variable or just called user equal um, default dot string for key. Why I use string? Because the value that I used here is a string. If it was an integer, you will put integer. If it was whatever the object type that you have, you will use that object type. Because it's a string, so I'm gonna use this uh, string value and I'm gonna use the key, All right? Again, you need to check, is it actually found or not, all right? But we're assuming that it found it because of what? Because we said here, let object for that key. So I know that I found it. Otherwise, it would have gone here and say, could not find, we could not find it. So now here you can say uh, txt dot name dot text equal the value that you stored. Okay, which is what the user. So it will take that user and update the screen with it. So now if I compile this and then we run it, the same device we used earlier. Now what I should see, I, when I click on get or read, what should happen? What should happen is that you will, what happens when you click on read, you will get Ali Farhad. Now, where is that Ali Farhad? Ali Farhad is stored in the device. So now, even if I close the simulator, if I click quit simulator, all right, the application is not running. If I click on run again,
when I click on run again, when I click on read again, it will find it because it's stored within your application. All right, is that clear? So this is how we use user preferences or user defaults. We use it to store small amount of data. Things like, for example, username, user ID, whatever you want to call it, levels, things that you need in your application and it does not need files or database, you can use these, the user default for those types of scenarios. So in this example, we know how we sh I showed you how to store information in the user default, and I showed you how to read the information from the user default. Any question on this? All right, we're gonna stop with this. And then in the next example, I'm going to show you how we write to a file and how to read from a file, all right?